This conference will now be recorded. I guess it's uh, two minutes after six. We'll uh, call the meeting to order. You know, if we want to, um, just for the purpose of the recording, everybody just uh, if you can say your name. Jay Walpole. Joe Johnson. Larry D. Heinz, Roth, Dan Casey, John Rendon, Harbormaster, and uh, Don Monroe is from Coastal Engineering. And I'm Roger Peterson, the vice chairman for tonight. Heinz Roth is Natural Resources Director. Okay, the first thing on the agenda. So we have the minutes from last month's meeting. Anybody have any um, comments or anything to say on the on the minutes? Everybody get a chance to review them. I, um, again, Mr. Yes. Chairman, I did review them, and there was uh, just a couple of minor uh, corrections that um, I made. One had to do with financial report. One of the dollar amounts was incorrect, so I uh, I have updated that, and I can give you this copy. Okay. Um, it just it was just a different figure than what uh, was on the report that I had reported. And so, uh, but besides that, I think um, there might have been a couple of typos, but I, I, I'm fine. So um, I'll take a motion for anybody to approve the minutes with uh, the Harbor Master's corrections. Corrections. Uh, second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the next would be uh, consent agenda, which we don't seem to have any. Uh, anything on the open forum? We'll move on to the uh, financial report from the Harbor Master. Anybody need a copy or want a copy? Yeah. Um, nothing, you know, nothing earth shattering. I think we're still progressing very well with regards to um, our revenues. A lot of it is timing. We just, today is the deadline for uh, renewal of moorings. So um, we have quite a few that uh, were last minute. We still have some, so I expect we're going to have some late fees coming up. Um, transient dockage, uh, our visitor dockage requests are still coming in, so we're processing them as we can. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we're, we're looking good. If there's any questions, specific questions about any of them, um, let me know. So our, our year to date figures are tracking pretty well. <clears throat> Um, uh, to, to last year. We're slightly below, but again, a lot of that's timing. I think we're, we're doing fine. If we have nothing else on the um, financial report, we'll just move on right on to the new business. We have a proposed dock replacement at 109 Riverside Drive. Uh, Argus is the property owner. I apologize. We're trying to figure out what happened. You know if uh, ink went dry on the fraud or what. So I did bring in some full size copies. So, this is one set. 
So the cover sheet really is sorry. This is the existing guy for the background. And I'll bring one up to you. Okay. So if you have it on the computer like Larry does, I, I think it's correct when you pull it up from the electronic version that we sent. It's just when you try to print it, something goes something black. So 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 this is the existing conditions. The house is here, Riverside Drive's up here, the Herring River is here. The existing dock, you can see through the aerial is right in this location. There's stairways down. And mind you mentioned someone they asked like who owns the property. Argus owns the property. Who was the person owned the uh, Frank Sampson owned the property. Frank Sampson, right. So so that this is the Sampson property. It was bought by Jay Argus. Um, the issue he has is that currently the float bottoms out at lower at lower tides. So I'm gonna to go to a section view to just show you what we found. <laughs> Right. Uh, next to the land, is it Lang? Yeah. He's doing the shellfish mm -hmm. under his dock. So it's, and that has that outcrop. Uh, I guess there's a bulkheaded area. So it's just down. That's just down the river from the way. Right here. Yeah. It's actually in the boat. So <clears throat> just using a section view to show you what he's uh, facing right now. This dashed line right here is the existing grade right here. And, and this is the float pushed out. But when the float is in its current, in the position it is today, it bottoms out in a lower tax. So he came to us and asked if we could probably see if we could either do some dredging to get the dock at the float in deeper water since it's existing, there's a good chance the commission would go along with that. And then the other option would be to change the whole configuration of the, of the dock itself and move the float out. <clears throat> so I had John and Heinz look at it on the property. Then we put buoys out there and then John took a look at it, let him talk about what he found, but he looked at it low tide because we were there during high tide. Yeah, were the buoys still there? <laughs> No, <laughs> they're in the river, but they were nowhere near. They knew it was supposed to be that uh, someone called me. The water's high. They're gone. Because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. They're further north. All right. So I guess I'll, what I'll do is go to sheet one of two, <clears throat> which are the two dredging options. The first dredging option. So I, I talked to John today. One of the things we have to be mindful of is the Vision Marine Fisheries won't let us dredge any closer than 25 feet to a salt marsh. We do have salt marsh along here. This green line is the 25 foot offset. Okay. Okay. So so that's plotted now on each view, so you can see. So so from their landward, they won't let. You. Correct. Okay. 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 That's, that's say that again. From the green line landward, they won't let. Them they dredge. won't let us. So further in landward from that green line. Okay, so I had talked to you. I, so the float is outside of that area. On the on the the dredging option that we have to move the float out in order to accomplish it six feet. When I'm seeing an existing plan, I see a green line and I see the float on the outside. Um, so if you look at, and it's really light. I'll point it out to you, John. The existing float right here. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at existing. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm describing it wrong here. Um, let me go back and start. <laughs> so, that the dredge footprint is this footprint right here. See that line that connects? 
see this the zero foot contour. We have to cut back to the zero foot contour and have a three to one slope from there out. So we're actually dredging land with that green line on that on this option. But you just said wouldn't allow, okay. but we wanted to show you the option because we have to do an alternatives analysis with mm -hmm. mission. So we have to say, okay, we booked that dredging, inside, but we won't be able because of EMS. But we we explored that option and we're showing you that option because we did. So I'm still confused. Exercise. So what is the green line telling me? It's 25 foot from the sea marsh, salt marsh, right? That's correct. Yeah. So you can't dredge inside of that line. Correct. Okay. And that, so the float is outside of that line, but you still can't dredge because why? Because the dredge footprint is this inner curved line that would be the proposed contour at the top of the dredge cut. Right here. Uh, you're not on the right. Uh, I'm on the existing. Yeah, we've got to go to uh, one of two. That's three or four. That's probably good. Uh, we've got one of two right here. This option. So, so see, this is the cut. So we'd be inside landward of the green line with leaving the dock where it is and trying to dredge. We explored that because we wanted to see how far. So why, why can't you pull out the dredge? That's on this option here. Without moving the float? Uh, we, no, we still have to move the float because we can only dredge up to this green line, which the dredge footprint's right here. So it's on the back side of the float. Yeah, but so you still have but, but that's at the top of the slope. So it's a three to one slope. And so okay, we keep going. I, I didn't mean to overtake this. I, just, I, I was confused. So 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 okay. it wasn't, but now I am. <laughs> yeah. All right. So so if we look at alternate dredge to print one section, that'll help you, John. Okay. Which is this section right here. So, dread making that uh, making that cut in order for us to get two and a half feet with the current regulations of three, we're we're not able to make the depth with that first option because we can't. <coughs> If we go to three feet, which is the next one down, then we're, our footprint goes in deeper into the earth. <clears throat> and it gets to into inside the green line in order to accomplish the three foot current. So see, the commission now requires three foot of depth at the backside of the float under the new regs. Since we're making changes to the dock, we fall under those regs. The three feet, which is shown in this, but if you're not changing the dock, then you're at two and a half steps. Your grandfather, correct? No, the float bottoms out. Oh, you're talking about if we if we're allowed to dredge to only two and a half feet. I'm saying if you short. don't change the structure, correct, you should still be required to maintain two and a half feet. Right. So let's not say three, let's say two and a half. Yep. Would you still have to start the slope as far back as you're saying? You yeah, because right at the top, see the top bar? Are we running 25 foot setback? You see the 25 foot setback? It falls right at the toe of the cut. So we'd be cutting the three to one slope. See this area right in here? That's dredging the slope closer than 25 feet to the salt line. Basically, you're right on the line. <laughs> you're right on the line, back side of the so, slope. So one of the things we've done in the past is box cut it and then show that the, the, the actual cut of the slope is like this. And then over time that, Will, will, will slough off. But unfortunately, the water quality department up at Boston started to get savvy to that, and then they input it to DMS, and then DMS said, 
the cut that you have to show wherever it is has to be the three to one slope, whatever that slope is, because it will it'll be the natural angle of recall or something that's here. So we can't really do the box cutting like we used to do. And that was how we were able to, you know, work around some of these difficulties like we did with Amino. So the one dread one that we that we could do that I talked with you about John is we still have to move the float six feet out so that we're able to push the top of the slope of the cut from outside the green line, which is the second dredge alternate, which is this one right here. Alternate two, which is this one right here. The existing float is shown in dash. The proposed float would be out six feet. We would have our dredge footprint at the back of the float outside of the green line. And that's, a, that's the best balance we could come up with, with having to move the float into the three feet of water so that the float doesn't bottom out, keeping it to meet the three foot depth because we're changing the float location. So the commission's gonna make us go for three feet. That's what we're anticipating. If we could get two and a half feet, if we get them to approve the two and a half feet, then we would be moving the float out less, but still have to move it out some mm -hmm. less than the six feet. We have alternative, alternative number one dredge limit, alternative number two dredge limit. Yeah. What's the cubic yardage in each of those dredge uh, ideas? Yeah, those are in the section. Yeah, they're one, two, three, four, three, three, four, three, I don't need to be We are asking to have the doc wall for both of them. Yeah. We, we wish we could cut further in to the salt marsh. We're kind of bound by the state regimen now. The, only, the other alternative, which I think is really a non starter, is if we're worried about six feet out, changing the configuration of the dock so it's angled more to the north, then Angling it back so that the float is actually parallel to the to the riverway instead of cattywampus to it. It's you still have to move it out seven feet. It ends up being out seven feet, a foot more than the dredge option. And I we came up with that seven feet based on the the furthest most point right here, John. The furthest most point of the existing float, drawing a line that's parallel to the shoreline. Then when you turn that and you scale it, you get a seven foot dimension outside the outside of the float. And just for discussion, does that one require dredging? No. But it is uh, but it's a foot further out. Yeah. You didn't have yeah. I don't want to keep the conversation. They hear that they'd be like all over. We from there for well, that's why we're here first. They're gonna want, yeah. Because we need and, and I know we have to work with John on the navigation part of it, so we need the waterways buy-in in which option. And that's why we've got a draft because we need you to vote on which option you would prefer. Then we just go to the commission with that. And they requested requires the shelf approval of the area. We ha we haven't done a shellfish survey. They probably will ask for one. We needed your input first, and when you were at the first meeting and the you didn't seem to think it was a shellfish issue. That's what I was saying. I don't, yeah. But we would still have to, it sounds like, do it once we get the option mm -hmm. chosen, then we still have to do a survey at that point. All right. Well, we can kind of usually go through all of them, and it's natural resources will be very quick on this one. Airing, obstruction, there's no eelgrass, and it's just that comment about there probably have to be shellfish. And it's all in the comment. That's going to answer your question. Yeah. So if they went with a dredge option, would the typical mitigation that we would in delivery for yeah. suffice, or would it require more creative? No. So from my way. perspective, all two yards or thirty yards, the mitigation would offset that. 
ten thousand dollars a year for three years, six thousand in one lump sum. The last one, because you brought, I was in front of conservation for that one. And they are going with more than the twelve. Come up on the last project, you could think of disturbance up. Not only like that, it was a lot. No This one has an existing dock, so we don't have the issues of crossing salt marsh that's never been crossed. We do have to make sure the decking on this thing. So we won't be looking at uh, crazy <coughs> elevation because it's well, good, good for the Yeah. I don't know how to. I must be I'll slow to do but. Can I ask another question? Yeah. So, how is alternative number one dredge limited different from the existing condition as far as where the float alternative is. one leaves the float in the same position as existed as existed? Okay. the The green line is the governing line for DMF. Yeah. We have to cut. Yeah, land would have that. So you're telling me they won't go it's lot. really not an option, an alternative. But that's what we're <laughs> we're supposed to present, believe it or not, alternatives analysis on all options that we looked at, even if it's one that wouldn't make uh, wouldn't be feasible. We flushed it out basically. Because one of someone said to, to to us, if we did the um, did not do that. And they said, well, did you look into whether or not you could stretch closer to the salt? Well, no, we didn't. But in this case, we can say, yes, we did. And we understand from DMF that this is not really a viable option, but it was both. I'm not, I didn't bring it in front of you guys to confuse you more than it's just to say that this is what, we, this is what we've gone through, this is what we've done to, to investigate all options. So there's only two viable options that we can consider here. Moving the dock itself slightly southward, angle it, and parallel the float, but it's out now seven feet, I think they said. But parallel to the, to the riverway instead of angled to the river. And the second option is the smaller dredge footprint, but moving the float about six feet. You can move six and move seven. Yep. But unfortunately, because of what it what it looks like at low tide, because we didn't look at low tide, it's very narrow. So now we're into a channel that's narrower at low water than at high water. And I think that's in Johnson. I'm struggling with that. Can you pull up Google Earth? <clears throat> And, and put in that address. I'd like, it'd be helpful for the board to see this, this location. It's right on the corner. It is. It's, it's, a, it's, right a, on, it's on a corner it's and so it's a cool. narrow. Yeah. What's the address? Yeah. 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 It is. And that's why I'm having. It, it's tight because of that other bank. I'm really just to the north and south of this area, the river gets wider, but it comes up, and, and this property happens to have their dock right where that point comes up. Because high tide, you cover water, and like that. But at low tide, you're there today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I think it's worth the board members looking at yeah. to put it in perspective of where yeah. this is yeah. and uh, the concern that I have. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it's a narrow. The boathouse is work to move it wider. Yeah, it doesn't make it right. No, no, no. 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 No,
consideration that there is a dock there already that has to have, you know, because it's permitted and they have it, that there has to be some consideration to making it usable and trying to meet the regs of what we're supposed to do. Yeah, existing yeah exactly. So they changed the rules, <coughs> state changed the rules on the salt market thing. So we created a hardship for this one. Um, oh, yeah, that because they can't go in there. They can't, they can't even dredge underneath. So they kind of created the hardship for the, for the owner of the dock. And the state, state's not the one flexible. They're not, they're inflexible. And we're asking the, the waterways and the I can't go in. That is a good analysis of it. Yeah, I mean, that's always the when you navigate, it's always their answer is to push it further out into the water and, and rivers that you suck anyway. You're waiting on the boathouse dock to the boat. So it's really not in the way. I mean, you guys, that's why that's why it's before you for you guys to vote. I have some concern. Um, you've done the analysis. That's you can't get it any closer than six feet out to achieve the depth. Not by the plan and the regulations. What about the, what about the, the width of the actual dock itself? Slope. You put me in small, so it's in any smaller, so it doesn't stick out this way. You said I don't know if it's four feet wide or. It's six. Here it is, right here. Mark. If they're going to come straight, okay. So, if you made it narrower, the dock is narrower, so it doesn't go out to six feet. We get more of a walkway to get on this part. It doesn't move. It doesn't move the back of it. It doesn't move the back of the flow. It moves. It just moves the water side flowed in a bit. So it's, it's, it's a compromise. So if it's eight feet, I would. I mean, I don't know. Eight feet pretty wide. Um, That's not pretty standard, though. So if we go narrower, we could look at maybe making it longer to get the same. Square footage. Square footage is the case. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a. I wouldn't go any narrower than a foot. That's I've been on the real narrow floats over in Allen Harbor, the marina there. They're like three feet, and they're like you know, all the. I don't think there. that's what Kent's yeah. talking no. about. I think he's talking about making it oh, six foot yeah. instead of eight foot. Yeah, six foot wide. Yeah. So you yeah. say two feet going out into the channel, and there are plenty of floats that are six feet wide. You certainly could sustain that so that it would work. Yeah, because you need an extra support pole on the ends or whatever, I'm sure you could yeah, engineer it properly. There. I think that it's a it's a great observation. And uh, I think, you know, obviously we're coming in with the owner's existing quote, not thinking, well, we should have probably thought of that. That's a good, good thought. If, if, if you knew that that was what we would do, would you be able to vote on that? Tonight, and then we would just amend the plan for you guys. Because see, we've got this plan, right? It's not going to get submitted to conservation because there's three options on it. We came to you because we need to know what option the waterways committee and the harbor master will go with. And we would prepare what's the notice of intent plan with your sign, with that signed plan from you folks. With the proviso that it's a six foot wide flow, so two feet closer. How about you just say it doesn't take any further out into, you know, past existing more than four additional feet? <clears throat> well, I mean, in the past, well, we've never kind of moved it on the plan that we don't have. That's, just that's, just makes it. That's what I was. 
a very yeah, it's, it's, before I go draw the plan, I need to know that you would lean towards if I come back. <laughs> well, <laughs> right? it doesn't sound like the hard mass would be support the one out of six or seven. So, would you support the one out? I, I think that's a great compromise. I, I should have thought of that. I'm glad you did. I think I, I you know, I'm not a big fan of going out further. I mean, in, in in very seldom situations, but this one concerns me because of the location of it. And it is at a very narrow part. And you want to take a field trip before you make your decision. I'll take you out there low tide and see it. Um, because it's it, yeah, on your phone. Too. Me and Heinz went, and I have a couple of pictures on my phone that, that put it in perspective a little bit. But um, but yeah, I think I, I probably support that. We'll come back with a plan that shows none of the other options. We don't need them. I mean, that way it's a clean plan. Well, you, you, do the, you want to do the one that yes. is the six foot to work off the plan that goes out six feet, out to seven feet. Correct. And then make the dock narrower. It'll, it'll be two feet yep. narrower. Yep. It may be longer, but it'll be the under the square foot. And it sounds like if that's supported by the harbor master, then we'll make that plan and we'll do, remove everything else. So then I don't even really know the four uh, six foot dock. You know, you want to go to four feet or five feet on the dock itself. So no, and then I think it gets really okay. from Perfect. a stability standpoint, I think that becomes difficult. Yeah. But I, I do I know there are floats that we that are out there that are six and if it's a little longer, I'm not so concerned about that. And you may have to put an extra pile in. Yeah, there, I don't yeah. And they, yeah. You know. We'll 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 design that and then come back to you folks with those changes. And just a plan with that on it, and that's it. And that's the notes and then so well, well, sorry. So six foot float, do you take from two feet off the inside? Uh, no, the, the outside on the, out, on the water side. Oh. So it'll be two, it'll be two feet narrow, but the back side will still be the same spot. So now it's jutting out two that's feet. That's change your, your slope. I mean, you oh. still can't dredge. We still will be dredging because it's that option that we're only moving it out six feet and we're staying outside the green line with that. So we're not, we're leaving the back edge fixed. So it's at the bottom of the cut. So we'll be fine. And then the, the loss of width is on the left side. Fixed of the proposed moving out six feet. I think that's what Yes. So yes. Move it out six feet, but cut two feet off the water. Oh, side. right. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. So, so still moving out six feet. Right. Still have to move yeah. it out six feet so we can accomplish the dredge to, to get the right depth on the inside. On the and the side. only way you get that is with the dredge. Yes. And that's why I would recommend that that chunk. It was just this dock and the existing pilings on. I don't think you have to have the survey, it was existing. Right. But because you're right. now <laughs> dredging, they're going to have to say, well, what are you dredging oh, in that? In your mind, I don't think it is. That's the only way. So, are you leaving the walker in the dock itself? That'll stay where it is. Stay where it is. Yep. Yep. Fixed portion of the dock. Yep. 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 So the end result, if you look at one of two, the outer edge of the float is going to be 28 feet from the center of the canal to the blue yep. line. That from the blue line, correct? Yep. Yep. Instead of 26, it'll be 28. Correct. Anybody have any more questions or comments? I think, I think at this point, maybe we should someone do a motion to continue this until a Coastal can come back with an updated plan. We can continue. Put us on the next April agenda. Okay.
We make a motion to continue the uh, J. Argus proposed doctor replacement um, until next, right, next meeting. Next meeting. Sorry, I thought you were waiting. 19th of April. I made a great suggestion on the dock. Help me figure out what we're going to do about the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the black one. Right, right. <laughs> uh, second, second on the motion. Motion made by Ken. And Jay, second of the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. You still got to figure out what happened to that original set. I know. You guys got to work through the machine or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, next thing would be, I don't see anybody here from the selectman's office, so we'll go with the Harbor Master's monthly report. You guys, put, I put it in the packet, if there's any questions, and it's just the standard. It's showing our activity for the month of February. Very, you know, Hi, guys. See you later. Good night. Good night. Good night. Nothing really operational. And just, There's no questions. We can move on to uh, the natural resource. Since our last meeting, I did go to the Conservation Commission to get an email process hearing, make comments, and people called in. And it was contention that came down to a two to two vote in favor. And they were going to go forward with that plan. And they'll be putting mitigation, but also bags of oyster shell but not oyster shell that will biodegrade in the bag and then the shell will dispose of garbage and settle on um close vote to that. Other than that, uh, yesterday division of fishery put in the electronic fish counter for the herring run. Tomorrow I'll be clearing from Long Pond to Hinkle Pond with uh, some group for Harvard Trump Fish Trust. Next week the AmeriCorps comes on Monday and Tuesday and I'll clear the rest of the Herring River and the Sing Fish Run as well. And with the, I mean, I say mild until the last two weeks. Um, it's very likely that this hearing will show up in the March, early April. I anticipate that. Was there any further discussion with you and the conservation regarding their outlook on the I think you're pretty fired up about it. I think the discrepancy, you know, why it worked for so long and now it doesn't work. I got up front and I introduced myself, went all the way back to the first. Created, I think I mentioned some of the comments here. Like, there were, there were just maps requested of the nephew at the time. Then it came into a mitigation program that conservation supported, conservation commission supported, and it has worked really well. And I actually made the comment that, you know, it's not broken bones, but I don't let that hang for a little bit. And then I also said there was no reaching out to the nephews, which are having me, and it's personally, but the nephew resource director was not contacted. Phone, email, it was only until the project came forth as a plan before any kind of ultimate shellfish mitigation was brought up. And I was not in favor of that route. I thought the standard mitigation were great. It's what other towns kind of envy us that we have that strength. And then I also used the words in a letter and there that presented that I thought Conservation Commission was being a little bit arbitrary and capricious, kind of like, oh, let's just see what we can do on the project. And I got a little pushback from one of the members on the board that they didn't think that that was their way of going about doing this and that this is, you know, kind of each project is its own. And I finished my comments with, I definitely see this as precedent setting. They don't. They think it's, well, it's just this project. Every other project is separate on its own entity. But that being done, alternate mitigation, also something that's visibly seen on the shoreline, that's definitely precedent setting for anyone else in Herring River, certainly. And I let hang as well 
and they didn't comment specifically to those things I brought up. If they were on record, people called in and the board voted in three people, there were a couple right away. The conservation agent was in favor of how she presented it, didn't have an issue with it. I didn't, considering what was taking place with the dock and the standardization. And it was summed up by their Pam, Pam is their shellfish um, survey person who talked about consistency of the material there. And uh, they've done everything asked of them. Other people, applicants, have never been asked to do more. The applicant in this case is willing to do more with mediation and some bags and stuff. And it just seems a little bit much. And it was Don who got up at the very end, kind of brought it together and said, look, you've heard from the conservation, you've heard from natural resources, you've heard from the waterways, you've heard from the applicant who's been here a couple of times over the last couple of years. It's done everything and more has been asked at this point. And it it seems just not that much, and they treated it, voted in favor. But it wasn't. I've only gone to a couple of those meetings here, but it was uh, forty five minutes, almost an hour of all that kind of brought up. Um, will there be more conversation about their ideas for mitigation, or will it end up just them kind of throwing stuff at the wall through different people and seeing what? Yeah, my feeling was after that, in the future, if they had ideas, I don't think they'd come to, you. to me with them. I think they would come up in a meeting when an applicant submits something to us that is brand. I just don't. Yes. I don't think that changed their minds. Like, oh, we made a mistake here. We're going to include it at least from the start the natural resources opinion or input. I never got that. It was more like, well, it just thinks that the, yeah. the property owner will pay the price for. Kind of yeah. unwillingness yeah, to collaborate. Yeah. Can you ask for it in writing? In the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd say whatever your standards are, can you put it in writing? But they have so standards. They, they have standards. Not, not not change 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 if you're going to change the standards, can you put the new standards in writing? So, so I have something to go by. That's why it works put, so well. Put the onus on them, make them do it. Yeah. If you want your opinion, we'll give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A sequence of operations for that, too, right? So, yeah. so in turn, next time they would have to contact. I don't think, yeah, I don't. It's like going to ask us, we'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't blaming the applicant, but. Well, he was in the middle. Well, this one will be an interesting one because it's similar. I mean, different location, yeah. but yeah. to see what they take yeah. back. When they want to have some, if dredging is allowed. And then what do they want in return for that? I think they're going to have a hard time getting past the dredging facility. I mean, Anino finally got it passed, but there's many members on that board that still can't seem to do that to stop. Well, once again, it goes back to the question this exists, so don't you have to, do you have an obligation to work with somebody who has something already? And just build it? Yeah, the, the, uh, they're, they're not asking to. Enhance or change, there's repairing to make it work, and they're trying to meet some standards that have changed that the conservation commission put in. They want it, they used to be two and a half, now conservation is requesting they're three feet. That increased so, that increased. well, if you want me to meet your three feet, I need to do that. So, there's got to be give and take almost that you would think, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, give and take. I mean, maybe it's too, re re too reasonable. Yeah. We give and they take, yeah. What well, well, change between that and three? Uh, what was the, I think just, they uh, wanted to, I don't know. I don't know why that's three foot. Because every other town was two and a half, right? At the time? Yeah, yeah they pointed the to some towns that they had increased. Yeah. yeah. Maybe title give more shifted clarity. by itself. Did they think it as a regulation or they just changed it on their own? No, they made a regulation. Oh, they did. Yeah. And they said, now going forward, they had a couple of things. One of the things they, Attempted or discussed was like, well, a moratorium on any new project carrying river. Just end total discussion ever. And then it was a little bit, and then they said, well, maybe a few years of moratorium. And then they went, okay, pull that off, David, but we still want higher walkways, greater spacing, three foot depth. So they got some other things. Greater distance from yeah. adjacent, you know, there to make it almost impossible to switch. Yeah. It's almost good about any of it. What, was, what what is the current you know dock left right number? 50 to 80. 80. 
There was a discussion one time, I guess, well, let's make it 250. Right. <laughs> well, people have 250 feet exactly. in front of That's, that's like saying the more time, well, okay, we'll compromise like 100. Wait a second, you know, why don't we ask for 20 feet mm -hmm. and then we'll compromise it? But the 250 would have been the same thing as a more than 100. There's just another way, and it didn't. I'm sure Mason did the one this week. Oh. Let's, let's, let's move on to the to the next part of the agenda on to the correspondence. Yeah, just just to keep you guys advised of a couple of things. So we're gonna be dredging this spring, Allen Harbor and Sacrapecket. Um that is if I get my permit approved, which has been pending now for over five years. So we'll see. Uh, but I think it will. You can expect us to be dredging. Our plan is to put all the material that we dredge on public beaches. So we're not going to be. So we're not going to be trying to. You? What's that? You want to fly through you for that sand? Well, like I said, I don't think we're going to open up. You know, some years, if we think we have excess sand, we'll do a public bid and then they can bid on purchasing sand to a certain amount. Um, we're not going to do that this year. Everything that we dredge is going to go to renourish our public beaches. And then the other one is the fish shanties. Um, we uh, renewed the license uh, agreements um, for the five fish shanties. They were on a 10-year lease that expired back in 2020. So we are a little late in renewing. Uh, three of the five uh, decided to renew, and these are commercial fishermen that are are Harwich permitted um, commercial fishermen, um, and the, the permit is an A permit or an E permit, which means they're essentially full time commercial fishermen with a Harwich permit. And uh, so three renewed, and then two opened up. Um, that became open. So we went to our list of commercial permit holders and we found, um, we offered the, the uh, vacant uh, shanty to those with the longest anniversary date, the people who have been here the longest. And then we started at the top and worked our way down. So that's how we selected um, uh, the folks to fill those two vacant ones. And so they got approved and signed, and now all of them are back on a, another 10-year uh, lease agreement. So. Do, they have, do they have to do their own upkeep on those shanties? Yeah, yeah, they do. They have to maintain them. And, um, you know, the town owns the property and have, to ta have taken ownership of the actual structures. Uh, but the lease is only for a dollar. Uh, and so um, the agreement is that the, the people have insurance on them and that they maintain them in a suitable state. They have power? They have power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all separately renewed. Right? They are. <laughs> this is a 10-year start now or does it start go back to 20? No, it starts now. Yeah. Anyways, that's it. I just wanted to let you guys know a couple things. Okay, the next meeting we have is uh, Wednesday, April 19th. Um, take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.